Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and in today's video I want to bring you all of the updates that I failed to bring you throughout the 2021 growing season. Now why did I fail to do all this? Well, what happens is I just get too busy. I'm juggling, I'm juggling, I see updates, I take pictures, and I never get around to making a video or including those updates in videos. So I have all of these pictures and stuff and I've never shown them to you. So I have updates on the Lysianthus, the Astilbe that I planted. If you remember way back in the spring, I planted an entire hedgerow of Astilbe. I have the forest garden updates. Let's see, what else do I have updates on? Oh yeah, I have updates on the bearded iris, the perennial phlox that I planted. I planted those inside of the landscape fabric inside of the deer fence because we all know how much deer like to eat the phlox. So I have perennial phlox pictures to show you. I also have some updates on the hydrangea field that I planted this summer, the 180 hydrangeas. Um, did they bloom? Did they not bloom? Mm, we don't know. And also I have a surprise update to tell you about. But first, I really wanna let you guys know that pre-orders are open for the 2022 Flower Hill Farm calendar. A lot of you guys have been asking me to put together a calendar with my photography. Now, if you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you may not have seen these pictures. I chose some of my favorite images from this growing season and I wanted to put together this calendar for you guys. So it's available right now for pre-order on my website. The link is in the description below. Right now, sales are open to US orders. I'm waiting to get back some quotes on some international shipping charges. I do plan on shipping these internationally. I should have these shipping charges shortly, so those sales will open, I'll let you guys know. A special thank you to everyone who already has pre-ordered. I announced this on social media last week, and so many of you have already put in an order and are even buying calendars for your friends and family members, which is a super thoughtful idea. Thank you so much for your support. There is a limited number, so sales will only be open until they're sold out. So the calendar itself is a 12 month calendar. It has more than 12 pictures though, because there is a back page with a surprise picture. The calendar is 12 by 18, but it opens up to 11 by 17 when it's hanging on the wall and it does come with a little hole for you to hang it up. So I'm very excited. It was really, really hard to pick the images for this calendar. I'm going to have to, you know, start working on this in advance next year for the 2023 one because um, it was really a lot of work to go through all of the pictures and choose out of all of my photos. I take thousands of photos and, uh, it was hard to narrow it down. So I think next year I'll have to have a better game plan, um, but I'm really excited with how it turned out. And um, it's not like a growing plan calendar or anything like that. It's simply a calendar with images and the dates. I am including a special gift with your order. And in addition to the special gift from me, I'm also including a handwritten note from me as well. So I'm doing all of the shipping and packaging and all that stuff from my house. So this isn't like a drop shipment where you're ordering it and somebody else is handling all that. It's me putting them in the envelopes and sending them out. So if you guys are interested, check out the description below. There's a link, it'll take you right to my website and uh, it's available for purchase. Okay, now on to the updates. First off, the Lysianthus. So you guys have been watching the Lysianthus from the day that I started the seeds, which was way back in December. And uh, so Lysianthus is notoriously difficult to start from seed. And it's not difficult to maybe germinate, but it's difficult to keep it alive long enough to get it into the ground, which is about 14 to 16 weeks. So imagine just keeping a seedling alive that long. There are so many things that could go wrong. And things did go wrong. I had fungus gnats in my basement. Remember that? <laughs> Fungus gnats in my basement. So I ended up having to start over again and that pushed back my bloom time, which was not fun, but I did have some beautiful blooms. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw some of these images. I had beautiful lavender colors. I had orange colors. I had apricot colors. I have the yellow and the whites. And I did have some beautiful, beautiful ones. Now they did not bloom to potential. For some reason, my blooms seemed to be a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller. And I believe that's because I failed to add compost into those Lysianthus holes 
when I was planting. I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the reason why, but everything else I remembered to add compost in when I was planting, and I just didn't do that with Lysianthus. So I don't know if it was just a lack of nutrients in the soil, because I did fertilize them weekly. So I'm not really sure, but I did include those blooms in my CSA bouquets for the season, mostly you know for the fall season, and the customers absolutely love them. So the second update I want to bring you guys is bearded iris. If you remember, I planted, I don't even know how many, more than 50 bearded iris rhizomes last fall. And in the springtime, when they started to sprout, I noticed only about two thirds of them sprouted. So I know they kind of had wet feet. That area was a little bit more soggy and I perhaps buried the rhizome a little bit too far. They like to be open and, and open to the air, but of the ones that did survive, the 30 or so that I did come and have a bloom, they were absolutely beautiful. I think my favorite was this black one. I think it's called All Night Long. Oh my goodness. And then there were a bunch of other ones that were absolutely gorgeous. I didn't really use these in arrangements, but I did one. I did cut a white one and put it together with some like Dame's Rocket and some of the other blooms that were, that were blooming at the time. And I absolutely adored that one. That was a bouquet I kept for myself. I was just kind of testing the vase life of the bearded iris because some people say they don't have a vase life, but other people say they have a five to seven day vase life, which that's good enough in my book to have something beautiful on my table. So anyway, the bearded irises, uh, we are adding to that this year. I did get more there from Jake's wholesale group. I have probably, I don't even know how many more in a box that I need to plant like yesterday. So they definitely did not disappoint. Okay. So up next, the astilbe hedge that I planted along the tree line. Now, I was surprised that day by my cousin Mike. He ended up showing up and helped me spread wood chips. So the astilbe, I think I had 50 bare root astilbe and they were both different shades of pink and I didn't know what was gonna happen. I got them in sort of late. You know, when you order so many things in and you're only one person and you're trying to plant all this stuff, you kind of run out of time and space to do this stuff. So I was planting it late. I didn't expect anything to happen other than green growth, but I was surprised when I went over there one day later in the summer and I saw almost every plant had a sprig of pink astilbe. It wasn't big, it was probably an eight inch sprig, and the greens themselves had only grown up to be about 10 to 12 inches, but they did bloom for me this year. Now, I did not cut any of them, I just enjoyed them with my eyes, and hopefully in years to come, they will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and double in size. In fact, my mom has one in her garden right now that she wants me to split and take because it's massive. It's just taking up so much room in her garden, so I might do that in the springtime. Anyway, really loving the astilbe. I think it's gonna be a great spot there. It's It's got morning sun and then afternoon shade. I think the astilbe is going to be happy there. I did plant mock orange in the front of that, and that did put on a lot of nice healthy growth, um, but obviously nothing bloomed from there this year. Okay, so now we're up to the perennial phlox. I planted 125, I think, perennial phlox, um, like Danielle and David and Popeye, those beautiful phlox that you see that are the tall perennial phlox. Those are great. In arrangements so I planted those bare root I did not expect to see any blooms from them this year and much to my surprise I did I saw a lot almost all of them gave me a bloom now I did lose a few I don't know if that was from insects or just too much rain I, I really don't know what it is but I did lose a flu a few plants a flu <laughs> I lost the flu <laughs> I did lose some plants, but the majority of them are there and they bloomed. In fact, they're still blooming right now. So they're, they're really fantastic. I really am excited to watch them grow and grow and grow and grow because they start out as this small, small plant and then they just get wider. I've seen them plants that are several years old that are, have like a three or four foot wide space at the base that they're just, they multiply and get bigger every year. So I'm excited to watch that area um, just kind of mature. Yeah. So many of you guys have been asking me for updates on the forest garden. So really early in the spring, I think it was March or April, my mother-in-law and I planted, oh, I think 125 columbines and then 25 hellebores. So the hellebores didn't really do anything this year. They just kind of had their own growth, but the columbines, some of them 
did have beautiful blooms this year, and they were probably 18 inches tall, which I didn't expect for planting bare roots this spring. That's an area that I expect to be impressive next spring. I was not expecting anything from that, but the fact that I did have some blooms already was beautiful to see. And I did use that in that same bouquet that I kept with the bearded iris. I did cut a columbine for that as well, so that you see right there. I would say about 25% of the columbines that I planted bloomed this year, which was nice to see. Also down there, I planted some Christmas ferns and all five of those bare roots, they took off and I do have some beautiful Christmas ferns. I'm just gonna let them, I'm pointing because they're right out that window. I can see it from right here. <laughs> that I'm gonna let them um, mature. I'm not gonna cut uh, anything off of that until they have multiple stems to cut from. What's next? Hydrangea, yeah, the hydrangea field, one of my most anticipated um, before and afters, which we're not gonna see one of those for a couple of years. But anyway, I was shocked. I was sitting in the garage one day with Brad, just sitting there, having a cup of coffee, and I look out and I was like, is that a hydrangea blooming? What? And I was so shocked, because I had just planted those out a few weeks before. And I actually got on the four-wheeler and it was raining, of course, and I just sprinted over there on the four-wheeler and it got over there and I was like, oh my God, what's happening? Can you believe it? <laughs> Look, I have hydrangeas, buddy. There were little balls of green limelight hydrangeas all over the place. Even one of the ruby ones was in bloom and I took pictures and I was so in love and so excited because they like, tripled in size already this year. The surprise update is the David Austin roses. So a couple of years ago, I planted David Austin roses and four of them I planted inside of a raised bed inside the deer fence because again, roses and deer, they don't love each other. Well, actually, the roses don't love the deer, but the deer love the roses. It's not a mutual relationship. So the roses actually did amazing this year. Only three out of the four because one of them she passed. A moment of silence, please. Yes, we lost one of the roses, but I will say that the three that I did have, which I think it's the poet's wife, the queen of Sweden, and then the Jekyll? Maybe not the Jekyll? Let me look at my Instagram. The Lady of Shalat. So yes, we did lose the Olivia Austin Rose. Olivia Olivia Rose Austin Rose. Olivia Rose Austin Rose. Yes, we lost her. That poor thing. And I heard that you should never plant a new rose in the grave of an old rose. So I just, there's nothing there. I didn't plant anything there because I was terrified to plant a new rose in the grave of an old one in case there was something wrong with the soil or something there. Fungus disease. Demons. The new roses that I got this year, I planted by the front porch. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, those are the updates that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. There were so many things that I did this year that needed updates. I'm not sure if I got around to all of them. I'm hoping to be better at that next year. I'm not making any promises though because she's a busy girl. So anyway, I do plan on having some help. I actually have somebody coming this week to help me plant the rest of the bulbs because I have 9,000, I think, more bulbs to put in the ground. Whew. It just hasn't stopped raining here, so I haven't been able to put my bulbs in the ground because the, the ground's too wet right now. So I'm hoping over the next week or so I'm able to get them all on the ground. And guess what? It's gonna snow tomorrow. Awesome! I have no doubt, no doubt. Don't tell me cause it hurts. Ooh, I have no doubt that I will get all the bulbs in before the ground freezes for the year. Holy guacamole, there's so much to do. I gotta go. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. But I have no doubt that I will get all the ball, the boo, boo, boo. I'll get all the ball, yawn. Stutter, yawn, yawn, stutter, trip, ball, bark. That's my life. And for those of you who are interested, don't forget my calendar is only available for a limited time. So get it while you can. Hi, flower friends. There are many things in nature that come bearded. Bearded men. Bearded dragons. Ah! And of course, bearded ladies. Ooh la la. But perhaps my favorite is the bearded iris.